I have uh, a brand new Next.js project running in my browser. Uh, this is my code editor. So there are two ways, uh, found out two methods of uh, doing this. The first one is uh, the default method that uh, Next.js app uses, uh, which is uh, having your favicon on, uh, I mean, in the app directory, like right now if I click on this you can see that uh, this is uh, the icon that we have and uh, if I navigate to my browser's uh, tab that is the icon that is uh, being shown so I can go ahead and uh, delete this uh, favicon and uh, I'm going to my desktop where I have stored an icon so the way you prepare your icon is that uh, you rename it to favicon or favicon.ico. Make sure the extension is uh, .ico. So I'm going to drag this and place it in the app directory. Let me just close it. I think uh, the app has already detected that because I, I have seen the refresh here then if i go to the browser you can see my icon has changed even if i do the hot reloading you can see the icon that is passed there is uh, this one here so that is the default uh, uh, method that uh, the next js application uses once you or when you create it now if uh, Maybe you want to display this uh, dynamically. Let's say each page should have its icon. Or let's say you're fetching uh, a list of products and you want to display the favicon depending on the product that you have uh, fetched. Let's say you want to display the image of the product you have fetched. So uh, the other method is uh, specifying the action in the layout that uh, js which is this file here and this is the global layout.js so it's going to apply to all the pages so it's very easy you just come to this uh, object this metadata object here and uh, create a key called icons then you'll pass the direction of the icon but make sure you have moved the icon to the public section where images are stored always like that then you'll just come here and pass the URL so the URL is uh, forward slash favicon dot ico then save it then if you go to the browser and hot reload this control shift r see that your icon still displays but uh, if like for example you delete it from here let's delete it i just hit delete and it's gone then save the changes i'll just click on the space and uh, control save so if i go back to the browser and hot reload you realize that that icon will disappear and to display a default uh, icon that the browser dis uh, displays when there is no favicon specified see that so if i hot reload again it's not there so let me just go back to uh, my folder where i've stored the icon then drag it and place it inside the public folder then close it then go back to the browser and hot reload yeah there we have the icon so let's say that we have uh, dynamic pages that we want to display in our project and we want to display different icons based on uh, those pages or the information that is passed in those pages so i'll take you to uh, 
uh, Next.js documentation. I'll just search for Next.js. Then I'll click on this uh, first link here. Then I'll click on uh, Get Started. My internet is a bit slow today, but uh, yeah, it uh, gave us the data. So I'll come to this search bar and search for dynamic uh, metadata like that. Then let me search it. It gave us the installation supposed to give us the metadata. Let, let me just search for metadata. Yeah, so we have the metadata here, but uh, we are interested in dynamic metadata, which is this section here. So assuming that we have a dynamic pages, let me just go to the app directory and create a product page. And then in, the, in this uh, product page, I need uh, a dynamic ID. So I'll pass the square brackets and inside I'll just pass an ID and then inside this ID directory I'll uh, create the page dot uh, gsx like that and then going back to the documentation they're saying that uh, they're giving us an example of the code that we can use this is TypeScript so let me change it to JavaScript because that is what I'm using then I'll just copy the whole of this then paste it in my page so let me just control B and that is pasted then I'll also need to install Axios because I'll be fetching data from an API so I'll go ahead and uh, open another terminal here. Then I'll uh, do npm install Axios. Then uh, there is a fake store API available in the internet, so it's free. We'll just uh, search for fake store API. So in this API, we can fetch a list of 20 products. We can also fetch like a single product, but per ID. And this is the URL that we're supposed to use. So when I click on that, it gives me a single product and the ID here is a one. So it gives me an object with the several properties. So let me copy this and fetch that from my dynamic page which is going to be this section here because this is where I'm uh, exporting the page component so I'll just return an h1 with a text of uh, because uh, to get the parameters or the the ID is going to be this params uh, argument or parameter. So to get the ID, it's going to be params dot ID. Like that. And let me save this. Then we are fetching the data using uh, Axios. So I'll not be using the page method. Let me clear this. I'll just pass Axios, then the get method. Then inside here, I'll pass the URL. And then uh, I'll just clear this. It's not necessary. So Axios is going to return data for this uh, product. So to get uh, the ID of 
our first product is going to be product dot data then dot id like that then i'll also clear this and uh, we are not interested with the title but we are interested with the image so i'll pass image here and i'll change this to an image i'll just show you the properties of the object that uh, we are going to get so let me go back to the browser if i zoom this you'll find that the json uh, object here has uh, id it has a title it has a price it has a description and it has an image here which is this url and this is what we are going to use now so don't worry about the code because i'll be posting this to github and i'll give the link to the description in uh, i mean in the description of this video so let me just test the page let's see if we are able to get the id and uh, because i'm using tailwind i'm going to give it uh, a class name of 5xl for the text because i want the text to be more visible like that then uh, let's go to the browser navigate to image not image but product then let's have an id of one then enter yeah axis is not defined because i had not imported that i need to import that at the top so import axis from axis like that the error should be gone so the page is just reloading yeah there we have it these weird lines are there because of the styling i can remove that by uh, creating a div here and I give it a class of uh, height of screen so that it's uh, the height is the height of the screen so let me copy this paste it there then save it yeah it should respond then the h1 i don't think there's anything we need to do to that it's just okay let's push everything to the center this is not a uh, tailwind uh, video or tutorial but i just want uh, the content to look uh, nice so you can give it a flex then flex call column so that everything uh, we don't even need column we just need to justify the content center and align also items at the center so it's item center like that yeah and everything now goes to the center so it's 20 products so we can use 1 to 20 so if i put 12 there you can see that 12 so the page is working very well now to specify the image that we want for our page we go to this page here and uh, in a section where we are returning the image instead of returning the image let's remove this first because it's confusing i want everything to be clear you just pass icons like that icons then save it so if i go back you see the icon has changed and this is the icon of the product so if i change it to maybe five the icon should also change again it's not changing maybe i need to hot reload 
Yeah, that's five. Let me pass six. Okay. Let's pass like uh, ten. Hit enter. It's not changing because uh, the reason why it's not changing is because this is fixed. So we need to fetch this dynamically. It's still fetching the same same product. So I'll just pass the back ticks and I'll have a variable here instead of one then the id is going to be dynamic so it's going to be params dot id like that so let's save this and if i go back to the browser and hot reload we shall have this icon let's uh, change this to eight Yeah, and we have a different icon. Unfortunately, I cannot zoom this, but uh, I'm sure you're able to see the difference. Let's use like uh, maybe 19. So we are fetching product number 19. And that is what we get. Yeah. So that is how you can dynamically display the fav icons or fav icons on your next js web pages uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, video see you next time